gets better all the time. Uh, amazing experience and uh, one that I know all of us on the line really feel blessed to enjoy together. A little background on the company itself. Uh, the Juice Plus company is actually, I guess we're right at 46 years old now. Uh, we entered the marketplace uh, that many years ago with a product that I'm sure you're all familiar with today, and uh, that was uh, smoke detector and fire alarm equipment. We were actually co the company that introduced that to the marketplace very successfully, obviously. Uh, we diversified over the years going into the field of environment, water filtration, air filtration in the early 80s, and then uh, diversifying again in the early 90s, we went into um, I guess you would say health technology with Juice Plus and the Juice Plus, Plus family of products. So if you look at our company, it's always been, um, you know, for the betterment of mankind. Uh, safety, clean air, clean water, pure food, and very, very basic to life. We've also been very blessed in that we have been connecting like this every Monday night, uh, staying connected to each other for over 25 years. Uh, we've never missed a Monday night. Uh, so it's become quite a tradition and uh, one that I think serves us all very well. Over all this time, we've had wonderful people who come to our call uh, as speakers uh, to give us in information, uh, inspiration, educate us, uh, really help us on our own journey uh, with both health and, um, and business, our manner in which we share with others. Uh, tonight we're, we really are double blessed, I think you would say, because we have someone who's very, very knowledgeable uh, from a health and medical standpoint and also has uh, been very effective in this profession as well. Uh, our speaker tonight is Dr. Tamara Sachs. She is a national marketing director with our company. Uh, she's an MD, a medical uh, doctor from New Milford, Connecticut. She specializes in internal medicine as well as functional medicine and integrative care. Dr. Sachs graduated with honors in 1985 from the Mount Sinai School of Medicine and completed her internship and residency in internal medicine in 1988 at St. Raphael Hospital and Yale University. She studied naturopathy in France for three years and is a graduate member of the Institute of Functional Medicine. Dr. Sachs worked as an emergency medicine doctor for four years and started her private practice in 1990. She has served on the advisory board of several organizations, including women, uh, including Women Heart Health, Women's Heart Health, uh, and the National Coalition for Women with Heart Disease. Tonight, though, she's going to talk to you about something that affects all of us, and that's living safely on a toxic planet. So. Um, Dr. Sachs, welcome to the call, and I'll turn it to you. Well, thank you. Thank you. And thanks, everybody, for, for joining. I was listening in with the introductions. I was <laughs> amazed how many people from all over have joined us. Clearly, this is a topic that uh, strikes home. Um, we've been hearing about arsenic and rice and all sorts of other things that might be news to some, but is certainly not news to me. So my hope tonight is um, that I can help you understand how your body really works so I think if you demystify it and you really understand the process, you can make better decisions uh, for yourself and for your family. And that's really my, my tagline, if you will, is what, I love, is what I love doing, is explaining things at a level that's understandable and yet still accurate. So for the doctors on the call, forgive me in advance. There are going to be some simplifications. I hope they're still accurate um, to your minds. But, you know, detox has become this fad. It's, it's on the cover of, you know, the magazine to the checkout, so that's like by definition a, a buzzword bad. Um, but it's really just a basic bodily function, and I think the more we understand how it works, um, the less chance you'll fall for the fad part of it and actually make, make, make better health decisions. So like most basic bodily functions, or maybe all of them, your lifestyle choices can make it either better, or easier, I should say, or harder for your body to do what it really wants to do, keep you healthy and vibrant. Right? So your behavior, <clears throat> excuse me, your conscious choices uh, always give the body either <laughs> uh, more work or less work, if you will, especially in this realm. Um, my daughter turned me on to expression. She didn't coin it, she tells me, but uh, most of us live our lives, um, or most of us that are health conscious, I should say, um, either detoxing or retoxing, <laughs> if you will. We go back and forth. 
we're good, we're not good. And that's, that's okay. That's what our bodies are, are, are there and, and, and programmed to do. But um, there have been harmful substances on this planet since before we were here, and there always have been. There's always been lead and arsenic in the soil in very small amounts. There's always been um, exposures to things from exterior and, and even more or as important when we talk about detox, um, we also detox the interior of us. So many of you now know about the microbiome. It's the new, the new other big topic in health, which is great. Microbiome refers to all the bacteria and other bugs that live symbiotically nicely with us that we rely on, actually, um, that make up part of our organism. There are actually 10 times more bacterial cells in our bodies than there are human cells, which is a whole other discussion <laughs> as to who's in charge. But the point being, we have to also eliminate those bacterial cells, waste products, not just our own. So detox is something that our bodies are always doing. Our bodies are designed to protect us from the harmful effects of substances, both from within and without. It's what we do, right? We breathe in air. We breathe out waste products. We drink in good water and, and take in good food, and we pee out the waste, and we poop out the waste, and that's detox. In a nutshell, that's what we do all the time, protect ourselves from harmful substances. And it really isn't that much harder than that. But the problem is we've made it harder because we've changed two very important aspects of this process in our environment. And so in the last 50, 60, 65 years or so, um, two really important things have changed, and that's why I think it's appropriate that detox is now a buzzword and a fad because I think we all need to be worried about it now. So the two things that have radically changed, you can probably guess the first, is that we now have thousands and thousands of chemicals and pesticides that have been released into our environment uh, hundreds of thousands that were just simply not here 50 years ago. And some of those chemicals are toxic to life. And some of those chemicals that we released over these years act as hormones. And they cause diseases in a whole different way than toxins usually, as we think of them, do. Um, they're more insidious. And the most of these toxins have not been well studied in people. The vast majority of them have almost no studies in human beings. And Almost 100% have no studies about how these toxins interact. And we now know that all of us, unfortunately, this is the reality, we all have at least 100, probably 200 on average, chemicals in our body for an adult American, um, and more so if we've lived in urban areas and so on, or, or to the farm for that matter, and other kinds of occupations. So we all have this problem, but we all have a sludge, a mixture, a concoction of chemicals. We all have rocket fuel, for example. We all have lead. We all have some arsenic and some mercury in us. We really do. And we also all have Teflon um, and other assorted lovely things like detergents and uh, um, flame retardants that, that are just there. And each of those have been studied individually to some degree, very few in kids, less than 5% in brain development, but none have been studied in combination. So we're an experiment in the making um, and so I, I urge you all to become informed on this um, and, and you know, certainly start, try to learn to minimize your ongoing exposures. And we'll talk about that um, as we go along. But the second thing that has radically changed in our environment in the last 50, 60 years or so that is making this detox issue uh, very important um, is that the quality of our food has changed radically. So not only does it contain now um, preservatives and additives if you buy processed foods, but even if you buy just produce, you're getting toxins and contaminants um, from pesticides and fungicides and herbicides and wind-blown things and so on. And you're also getting food that is significantly, by the USDA's own measurements, less nutritious than it was 20, 30, and 50 years ago. The soil is depleted and the ways that we farm with monoculture and um, all sorts of other things that I won't go into, um, renders our food really great for the shelf. It looks pretty. Um, it, it transports well. It doesn't bruise. It doesn't rot and transport. You can flood it with gases in your truck and make it look pretty when it gets cross country uh, or across the world for that matter, but it has nothing to do with nutritional density. There's never been any effort in the last 50 years to make food more nutritious, except in third world countries. But here, it's always about being more lucrative by having a better shelf life, transport time, and looking good so that we all buy it and pay more for it. Unfortunately, if food were sold by nutritional content, we'd have a different situation. Um, if people were incentivized to, to grow food that was nutritionally dense, um, life would be better. But in reality, we have this combo of 
many more pesticides in our environment than this body of ours was genetically designed to handle, even though we can handle all of it. We have a mechanism to handle all of it. It's overwhelmed us. And the tools with which the body does, oh dear, sorry, the tools with which the body does handle toxicity um, is nutrients, is nutrition and nutrients. And that's the thing that we have the less and less of. So you can see we're in a kind of a double, a double whammy. So this combination has just overwhelmed our senses. And um, I, I do a lot of work in this realm, not because I started out looking to do this, but because toxicity and problems with the detox system and overwhelming it are a very common root cause of chronic illness, and that's what I take care of. So lest you think this doesn't apply to you, just briefly, diabetes is the fastest growing chronic illness in the country, um, estimated to take over one-third of the American population very soon, which not only is tragic for the people involved, but will financially ruin this country. Um, and we now know without, without a doubt that toxicity has a, a huge role in it. Um, I started talking about this well, the study came out about 14 years ago, but there have been several since. In fact, a very recent one showed a 60% increase in diabetes at the highest level of toxicity in fat. It turns out fat cells are the carriers. Fat cells just, just carry the toxins um, and store them for us. <laughs> so they're a reservoir. They're a pool. Um, so, Sorry, I got distracted with that phone call. So doing this work has, has been part of what I do to help chronic illness and, and really how to prevent it as well. Uh, I'm not going to bore anyone but the nerds in the audience for just a second, but there are huge numbers of studies now linking heart disease, heart failure, uh, strokes, uh, heart plaque, all have the, the most inflamed and nasty ones all have huge amounts of toxins and heavy metals in those biopsy uh, samples of those kinds of lesions. So. Uh, brain disease, heart disease, dementias, um, rapid aging, immune dysfunction, other immune diseases have all been clearly linked to toxicity. Um, in fact, there are studies now showing clearly that junk food, just processed food itself, um, statistically, epidemiologically, increases the risk of autoimmune diseases by, by huge, huge amounts. And we're seeing huge rises in all these diseases, of course. So what do we do? You know, enough doom and doom, there's really a lot that we can do. And I think the first thing is to understand you know, how to do this. And I'll just say briefly, I love this work because people get better. You know, it really does work and it's very easy to do and most people on the phone can do this by themselves. If, if you are really sick though, please get help before you undertake a, a detox program. Um, uh, part of my interest in this is personal. I will share um, a, a personal story with you all. Briefly, 20 plus years ago, I was um, very, very sick. I was actually disabled. I couldn't work for a while. Um, I couldn't think, I couldn't function, I was in tremendous pain and exhausted, um, and I took a leave of absence. Um, and for two years I struggled to figure out what was wrong with me, and I, was, I spent a lot of time visiting all my old professors and did the rounds of uh, some of the top places in the country, and no one really could figure out what was wrong with me. And it wasn't until years later, putting it all together, that I figured it out. I had a massive, almost industrial level exposure to mercury, but no one had ever asked me any of those kinds of questions that would have unveiled that. I didn't really realize it till later. Um, it was a series of perfect storm events. I was nutritionally depleted, I was exhausted, and so on. But nonetheless, I was able to heal myself by learning the principles of nutrition. I didn't really know what had happened to me till later, but simply by providing my body with the nutrients it needed by doing some blood testing and so on, providing my body with the nutrition it needed and the fruits and vegetables concentrates that I got, that is what got me better enough to start thinking and learning, <laughs> and that's when I went back to school and figured out about chemistry and functional medicine, and then in retrospect, I could put it together how I had managed to go from disabled for two and a half years to functioning better than, um, than the average bear. So, so this stuff is really personal, and it works, and it's important, I think, um, because so many of the things that have no name, where people just don't feel well, the fibromyalgia, of the world, the things that don't really exist except as a name, um, that's what this is. This is underlying toxicity. So, so the first rule of toxicity, as you probably all know, if the gas is, you smell gas, right, turn off the gas. So stop the ongoing exposure. So, you know, you can learn about doing that from a, a resource called Environmental Working Group, and so it's ewg.org. They do a great job telling you what to, what's safe, what's not, you know, where you can get, um, 
And what foods you don't have to bother to buy organic, you know, the, the 15 cleanest foods that you don't have to spend money on buying organic, and the 12 most toxic foods, for example, that you do want to buy organic. So they're a great resource. They're a wonderful organization. Again, it's ewg.org. And they'll help you um, learn how to avoid the toxins that you can. But there are toxins that we can't avoid. There just are. Um, and I want to I want to talk to you about how what happens in that in that regard. So when you're exposed to a toxin, um, your body either is able to immediately get rid of it, um, or it puts it aside, if you will, till it can. And it might put it aside just a little bit, or in deep storage like lead. Lead goes to bone because lead is really toxic, and it wants it out of the blood. Your body wants it out of your bloodstream as quickly as possible, so it binds to bone, which is the slowest most inert tissue in the body, so it's going to be relatively away from more important tissues. So, like, the body's smart. It stores things if it can't immediately process it, and that's one example. Um, but what the body wants to do is transform that toxin into something safe so you can then get rid of it. So the real process of detox is a, a two-step dance called transformation and elimination. You transform a nasty substance into something safe so it doesn't hurt you, as you pee it out or poop it out or breathe it out or whatever you're going to do, sweat it out. And that's just the process. And so that transformation, and you can kind of, I kind of imagine a toxin being um, enveloped or mixed up with a bunch of other ingredients to make it something else. It's transformation. And you can make it something safe. And there's only a handful of ingredients, if you will, in that process of transformation. Um, and those ingredients are all nutrients. And that's why if you don't have enough nutrients, you cannot detox. You only can store toxins until you have those nutrients. And you don't have to do anything. If your body is given the proper ingredients, it will carry out the recipe, transform the toxins, and eliminate them. It's only when you don't provide all the ingredients that the process needs help. Otherwise, it wouldn't need help at all except that we're overwhelmed with toxins and underwhelmed with nutrients. So the help that we need is in providing a lot more nutrients. Does that make sense? Makes sense. I'm enjoying it. to talk to an <laughs> empty audience, so thanks, y'all. <laughs> Appreciate that. Um, so the two steps that our bodies do to detox, um, and by the way, detox is this huge system. The detoxification system operates 24-7, but it's especially active at night when we sleep, hence restorative sleep. Um, but it's 24-7. It's every cell. There's several stages. It's universal. Um, but it's a very high-energy system. It takes up a lot of energy. It's a really important system. If we don't clean house, we would be very sick and very dead very soon. So it's not just about what we're talking about here, which is unwelcome toxins. It's a constant process like I said before, breathing in, breathing out, eliminating all the waste all the time. But what we want to do in the setting of toxicity or, or try to down, download, if you will, some of the excess toxins that we haven't been able to deal with is be able to have the ingredients to transform them into something safe and then a healthy enough gut to be able to eliminate them and skin system to eliminate them and kidney system to eliminate them and so on. But the gut is still the primary system of elimination. So when I think of the transformation process, it's really about two things. To transform a toxin, the process, we think of it primarily in the liver, and that's easy. It's not all in the liver, but it's a lot in the liver. And that liver's job is to take this toxic substance that's coming down the pike, wrap it with something, change it with something, mix it with something to make it safe so that it can then dump it into the system that's going to then eliminate it. And so the things that you can make it safe with come down to a small number of ingredients. But like any cook will know, you can substitute a few ingredients here and there. You can't, you can't totally eliminate a whole group, but you, can, you have some lead way. And that's the same in the liver. The liver has a little lead way, but it has to have basic ingredients. And the recipes to tell the liver how to transform that toxin versus that toxin are your genes. The system in your liver called P450s, which are the detox, in every cell rather, which are the detox system genes. And those are the recipes. Because it's different to take a piece of lead and make it safe and eliminate it than it is to take a paraben or a phthalate or a petrochemical. 
or a bacterial byproduct and transform it into something safe and eliminate it. So there's lots of recipes, lots of different recipes that the liver needs to have so that whatever toxin comes down the pike, it's able to transform it into something safe and then the rest of the body can eliminate it. And that's the plan. And those nutrients that you use as the recipes ingredient list come down to plant foods. With a couple of exceptions, they're really plant foods. The, the group, just briefly, is protein, because you need individual amino acids that combine with toxins that make them safer. You need something called methyl groups that come primarily from B vitamins, primarily from foods like foliage, to help detoxify things. You need minerals. Minerals look like metals, act like metals, so you can exchange a mercury for a, a magnesium and a lead for a zinc. And you need extra minerals in order to detox because toxins are held captive, if you will, in places that don't have enough nutrients. You have to bump them off with the correct nutrient in order for them to leave your body. So we need more nutrients than we're even getting. And so you transform this toxin with adding those kinds of ingredients that, again, are all plant-based, but the whole process is dangerous. You're dealing with toxins, right? They're hot. That's the whole point. You have to get rid of them because they're harmful. And so you want to bathe the entire process with antioxidants, with colorful fruits, vegetables, and berries that provide an antidote for the free radicals, the damaging electrons that are produced by toxins. That's how toxins hurt us. At the bottom line, end of the day, no matter what toxin it is, free radical damage is at the bottom line of how it causes cell death. So you have to bathe this whole process in a large amount of plant-based colorful foods to provide the correct antioxidants. You can't do it with vitamin C alone or E or any of that stuff because it's a system in balance. It's not an individual substance. The antioxidant is a system, not a thing. There are no antioxidants all by themselves. They all need to be regenerated, and they're part of a cycle. And if you take them out, isolate them, they don't work the same. In fact, they become pro-oxidants and dangerous. So only foods and, and colorful, bright foods specifically have the right stuff, have the right balance to protect the liver and other cells during this, this process of transforming toxins and eliminating them. And then it's a beautifully engineered system, of course. <laughs> How else could we be alive? And so the, the plant foods also provide everything you need for the second stage, which is elimination. So you need fiber to bind the now safer toxins to make sure they don't escape. You need things to help escort them, if you will, through the liver, the bile, into the gut, and, and then and eventually out of the gut or through the sweat, <clears throat> excuse me, or through the kidneys, the urine, and so on. But you still need things to bind and accompany those now transform toxins safely because it ain't over till it's out of you, right? Until it's actually physically out of your body, you haven't done detox. And so all the other plant ingredients, if you will, the pectins and the fiber and the, the, the probiotics and the, the prebiotics, all of those things in your gut are critical to get the toxins completely out of your body. And, and fruits and vegetables and berries, and especially what we have, which is a concentrate of the particular fruits, vegetables, and berries that we need to do this job, you know, are why I don't allow people in my practice to detox or to go into a detox program, really to do anything for that matter, um, but especially a, a program like by trying to get rid of stored toxins without talking to them about their consumption of fruits, vegetables, and berries, and explaining to them that um, even if they were doing the recommended USDA 13 servings a day, that's baseline. That's maintenance. If we're going to start pulling out old toxins that have been stored for up to 30, 40 years for some people, we need a lot of more extra nutrients. And how can we do that without having it concentrated in the capsule? And that's why Juice Plus has been an integral part of my detox programs for over 10 years. And I think that's really why I have such great success. And I, I tell people it's in my written handouts when I do personalized wellness plans with folks that they should not feel sick doing a detox. They should not feel crummy. You know, they, they could feel a little tired. That's it. If you get headaches and, and you feel like you're whooped, then something's not right. Because the way I do this process of transformation and allow your body to have all the nutrients it needs detox doesn't hurt anymore. And I think that's really only because of Juice Plus. I don't know any other way to get 30 raw fruits, vegetables, and berries into people at high doses at a really affordable price than using Juice Plus capsules. 
and then the complete has the inulin and the fiber, <clears throat> excuse me, and the amino acids um, and a lot of the other ingredients that are critical for detox. So it's really a perfect detox program together, the complete shakes once or twice a day and the capsules on top of that. Even if you're not doing a quote-unquote detox program, from the moment you start taking Juice Plus, you're going to detox. You're going to detox more and better than you ever did before because the body will always detox if it has the ingredients to do the recipes. If it can transform a toxin and get rid of it, it always will. It doesn't like storing toxins. It only stores toxins if the nutrients are not available. And so the minute you provide the nutrients, people start to backlog, detox the stuff that they weren't able to process and get rid of before. And that's what we've all seen. Is that, isn't that, Cheryl, isn't that right? We all see people who start taking juice plus and complain sometimes of a day or two of something. Yes, and usually minor. Uh, but, you know, I, I myself, I, you know, when I started, it was like uh, probably a little uh, bit, you know, the, the tummy took me to the bathroom a little more frequently. Mm -hmm. But I was mm -hmm. one of those people that grew up and lived in south Louisiana in the sugarcane fields, and they dumped insecticide on us every day. So I probably have, my body was dealing with so much, and uh, like you, you know, we we don't always tell all of the things that were our background, and then every now and then you have an opportunity to, or you feel like you should, but, uh, you know, when I complained of, you know, a lot of pain and exhaustion, as you're talking about, uh, and I did. I had really severe problems with that. They tagged it as, you know, fibromyalgia. And to this day, I don't know anything other than it got so much better once I was on Juice Plus, and it's never returned. So, you know, but it was something I lived with for 20 years. And I think the reaction to Juice Plus that, that, is, that is not um, common, as you said, but it happens a few days of tummy rumbling, you know, in my mind, and, and maybe you guys can see this now, what I think happens is the first few days you start to detox stuff that you haven't been able to. It gets sent through the bile into the gut, and now your gut's like, ooh, get rid of this stuff. It's nasty stuff. Let's get rid of it. And so you have a little bit of a loose bound movement because your body's smart. <laughs> you finally detox some old junk, and your body wants it out of you. But fortunately, that doesn't happen you know, very often or significantly because you're just playing slow catch-up. But some people get a pimple or two. Some people say that their sweat smells funny. In fact, people who have significant industrial exposure to chemicals uh, always have a change in their sweat, which I always welcome and, and congratulate them for. Um, it means that we're, getting, we're mobilizing toxins and getting them out through the sweat glands, which is important. Um, so things like that happen, urine changes, smell. That's all signs of, of better and more detox happening simply from adding capsules. And I think that's what's amazing. Well, I'll be grateful for it and have been. You know, I've not missed it a day in the 24 years that we've had it. And, you know, myself, my family, my grandbaby, I just feel like we're so blessed because I know personally I wouldn't have the level of health I have today. I would, And I think I really missed a lot of really bad experiences health-wise that may have come my way if it hadn't been for Juice Plus. There's no, and there's no question. We have enough studies on real people, you know, almost 3,000 people now over 22 years and, Four continents, you know, almost 40 studies now. To, that, that whether you felt it or not, it's still happening. <laughs> you know, that's the beauty of, of studies is that we know for a fact things happen at a cellular level when people take Juice Plus. Whether those people are healthy or superstars, right, elite athletes taking Juice Plus, or sick people with ovarian cancer or head and neck cancers taking Juice Plus, the whole gamut, right? Kids that are overweight, pregnant people, everybody who's ever been tested benefits. Whatever we look at, whether we look at cell hydration or, you know, antioxidant levels or whatever, um, everybody always benefits when you add 30 raw fruits, vegetables, and berries to your diet. That should not come as a surprise to anyone who studies nutrition. What still comes as a surprise to me is sometimes people don't quite get that. And I just want to add, I want to forget to mention one thing, that, that the dose that is recommended and that we all use is what has been on all the studies and is really a very effective dose, meaning two capsules of each color a day, so ideally spread out during the day, one in the morning, one in the evening. It works better if you 
gives your body antioxidants and nutrition all day long, not just once every 24 hours. Um, and, and this is not true for gummies, okay? Gummies are for kids. They're not as potent as capsules. So you can always open the capsule and use the powder, but I'm talking about the potency of capsules here. Um, you know, when people take those at just that dose, we can document over and over again very statistically significant changes at a cell level. But let me tell you, when I do detox with people, I have not take more. I have not take a lot more sometimes if they're overweight, if they're old, if they've been very ill, if they've had bad exposures, if they've had chemo. I ask them to double or triple or even quadruple the dose, and I've done the math, and I don't know of any other um, product or system, whether you do fresh wheatgrass, whether you buy your own organic produce and do juicing fresh. This stuff is such a better value, and you're getting cleaner food because, you know, NSF certifies that Juice Plus is cleaner than organic. We have you know, no residuals, you know, very, you know, the, the minimal residuals of everything. So you, you just can't find another way to do detox. I still like juicing. I still love wheatgrass. I still love, you know, she, you know she weeds and things. But to get 30 raw fruits and vegetables is, is exactly what the detox pathway requires. It's just perfect. And, you know, Dr. Sachs, over all these years, I mean, I've been – interacting with people on a daily basis for uh, with Juice Plus. We've had it a little over, I think, 24 years now. I've taken it every day. I've watched really hundreds and thousands of people within our own organization and their customers have such great success with it. And, you know, you just can't help but be inspired as this continues uh, to always be the case, and no matter what the body's dealing with, it just deals with it so much more efficiently. I've seen it in myself and my family, uh, but in you know, as you say, we look out amongst uh, across the field as far as our customers and distributors are concerned. And I have watched people who were very ill or who had a specific problem. Uh, just consume a lot more, um, and even if it's for a time, and then go back to uh, their regular amount when, you know, things seem to be under control or they mm -hmm. you know, they passed it, whatever the difficulty was. I mean, I've watched people with asthma. I've watched people with digestive difficulties. I've watched with, uh, like you said, across the board. And I certainly am not a medical professional. I don't have the background that you have, but I certainly, you know, am happy for my own body as well as all those people that we serve uh, by sharing this with others. So it's exciting because it's very real, and when you see it happen to so many hundreds and then over time thousands of people, you can't help but be just, you know, so feel so blessed that it's something that you have for yourself and the people you love. I agree. I agree. And it affects generations to come. That's you know that's because of something called the epigenetics and epigenome. But by feeding your children and your future children better, uh, especially with plant-based foods, you are affecting the health of every generation to come, which is so so powerfully magical. It's hard to even imagine, isn't it? And you know what I love? I don't remember exactly how you said it, but it's always one of my favorite things um, that you said to me once, and I think you said it in one of our trainings that. And, of course, you with the medical background, medical expertise, and then the medical experience with people over all these years, you said something to the effect, if you knew what I knew, you would never miss a day of juice never. plus. Is that how you said it? Yes. I mean, it was shorthand for if you'd read all the studies. I mean, I've, I've poured over these studies over the years, and so it was shorthand for if you guys knew anything about what I knew, if you knew a little bit about all this stuff, you would never let anyone you love skip a day, and you would never skip a day of Juice Plus yourself. Yeah. And uh, I, once you, you know, really get in that regime of uh, taking Juice Plus every day, you can't imagine being without it. I mean, I, then when you watch it in children, uh, you know, I've got a five-year-old grandson here, and it's so interesting because, of course, his mother had it, my daughter, when uh, for years, and then more so when she was pregnant. And he... She nursed him, so it was breast milk, and then we started him on the powder, the first bit of food that he ever had, you know, had, as Dr. Sears calls it, sprinkles on his food, which right. was the powder exactly. the capsules. Yep. And he's five now, and by his own, you know, recommendation, started swallowing capsules very early, which I don't recommend, but it, it was, you know, he was going to do it like the grown-ups. But he mm -hmm. will not let us forget that any any day. I mean, he's going to remind us. 
Now, at five years old, and you know there's no taste to it if he's swallowing the capsules, so his body must somehow instruct him that he needs that because he doesn't let us forget it. You well, there's things to sell memory, and, and anyone on the line who's had kids um, before Juice Plus and after Juice Plus, it can probably test that um, that these used to seed in. But when you take Juice Plus, you start craving fruits and vegetables. You get an appetite for what you eat. And we know that's true in the reverse. If you start your day with donuts, you're going to want start to sweet things all day. Uh, that's the way the body works. It's called sound memory. So, yeah, we're giving our kids the right memories. We're giving our kids the memories of kale and broccoli instead of Cheetos and Twinkies by giving them Juice Plus, and the body will remember um, and want that food. And it's an amazing experiment that you'll be so fascinated with if you watch it because, again, I don't think any child at three or four or five or six wakes up and says, well, I really need to eat some kale or some broccoli today because it would be good for me. I mean, actually, Oliver will, you know, and I think kids are programmed this way some somehow. I don't know how this happens where they say they don't eat vegetables, well, he'll tell you, you know, oh, I don't eat vegetables, and he's he's got something in his hand. It's either a cucumber or a, <laughs> yeah, and he's eating it. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> and you laugh because I do know some children. In fact, there's some on the line I think who, who, who do who do eat and, and ask for kale and those things, and they that's what they were raised on. I mean, I think yeah. that's you know every immigrant still wants their immigrant food when they get wherever they're going. Everywhere right. in the world, <laughs> when you're sick and you got a cold, you want your comfort food, and that's the food you were raised on. So That's your childhood I, food. I think it's so food. we have to make sure that our kids are getting this food. Right. And, and, and it, it family, really does a large work. family. I'm sorry. It really does work. That's what I'm saying is, you know, yeah. you know it's got to be working on a cellular level or some sort of uh, body dictation to the person because it can't be a deduction uh, from their logic that they would have to have fruits and vegetables on a daily basis. In True. Their so, it, so if we didn't have 38 peer-reviewed published studies in journals, we, would still we could have go with this. Says, <laughs> I would like to have such and such. And uh, However, I think it must be cool amongst five-year-olds to say they don't eat vegetables yes. even though they have one in their hand. You know, That's exactly what I think it is. Yeah. <laughs> so. And the last thing I would just point out is, is the affordability. I mean, I don't know how you can eat, you know, even the five servings, let alone 10, let alone 13, let alone 30, at the price that we can offer. So I, I have no compulsions asking my patients to double their dose or triple their dose. Um, you know, I talk about the finances, but the options of juicing fresh or, or even just eating a lot more organic food at some level, um, <laughs> this is a really great value. This, this, this is well, an amazing value. And not value only the value of, you know, what you're, you're getting for your body, but just look at, you know, the medications many times that people can either eliminate or never have to take uh, because they've kept the level of health they had. The amount of money that's saved there. Is just, or just feeling, feeling miserable, like even I both did 20 years ago. miserable because I know what that's like, you know, and and not ever really finding anybody to, you know, give me any direction as to what I could do for myself. And, and that went on for a good, you know, um, 18, 20 years because, you know, as, as children and then as young adults, uh, we know we just lived under an insecticide cloud, which is, that particular type of thing that was dropped on us at that time is banned across the country today. So, uh, you know, we still get a lot of, and probably a lot worse maybe, but, uh, you know, it's just, it's rampant, I think. And It is. It's just changed. Now they don't have that particular toxin, but they have, they have many, many others. And it's and probably much worse. more insidious. I mean, yeah. every single part of our house now, every part of furniture, your clothing, you know, is is treated, is sprayed, is is synthetic, is blah blah blah. I mean, now there's the whole problems with the wet houses, with some Katrina and the other storms. You know, people are living in in houses that were flooded, creating a bunch of other toxins. We're fracking. We're we're pouring chemicals and toxins into the earth. Do you think it's not going to come out somewhere in our water somewhere? So we have all the old industries that were not well regulated, like the pesticide spraying that you endured, or where I live, we had the hat industry and the leather industry and the paper mills right around our aquifers, but it, now it's just much more insidious and everywhere. There's nowhere to go. That's what people have to understand. It's not that it's news that there's arsenic in the rice. Of course there's arsenic in the rice. There's lots of stuff and lots of stuff, and you have to protect yourself by being educated and limiting what you can, but understand that you cannot 
absolutely positively cannot live on this planet and avoid toxins. It's not possible. So you have to protect yourself with extra nutrition so that your body can handle those toxins. It's the only reasonable solution at this point and work hard, I hope, politically, I hope socially, I hope all of us, you know, take a stand to not leave uh, this planet in such a, a state to our children and grandchildren, but that's another discussion for another day. Well, and it could go on and on because we all have very strong feelings in that regard. But, you know, uh, again, I've been so grateful and for so many years now with Juice Plus, and I say this all the time, I really feel like it's given me my edge physically that I would not have the level of health that I have. My family would not. Uh, it's just given me that edge, and it's, it, I see it happen with other people all the time. And, you know, a lot of people don't ever figure out how to get an edge, yeah, I guess you would say, on their health and their health picture. And I don't know that I would have if Juice Plus hadn't come along because I would not have known how to look for it. So I think that's the great beauty of what we have to offer people, and certainly now many years of experience, uh, and I think uh, – were you the one that said this morning somebody did, maybe it was uh, Dr. Candace Corson, on, you know, at this point now we have 20 years of research on this and it's clinical peer-reviewed studies, which you would certainly, you know, know more about. You probably know how to read them. I just know how to hear about them. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's it's really an amazing thing. It sounds so simple, but it's so powerful. So I certainly thank you for your input uh, tonight. We... Um, you know, we're just, I think we're so fortunate to all know each other and be here to support each other, and thank you for your knowledge. And, you know, all the years of not only your study and your research and your practice, but bringing that information to us and helping us to get a clear picture of how we can take care of and protect ourselves. We really, really appreciate it. Thank you so much, Dr. Zach. My pleasure. We'll say good night to folks and uh, really encourage you. The best thing you could do for your body is, you know, really juice plus, and then that's going to encourage you to eat those foods that are going to really support your body in a wonderful way. And uh, thank you again, and it's been a pleasure to have all of you on the line. Good night, everyone. Good night.